problem and challenge that we have in ministry is a sense of self-entitlement. Five years ago, I offered my candidature to the office that was vacant then, and I sought to be the bishop of a diocese. And by God's grace, I did not succeed. But the following day after the elections, the Episcopal election were done and dusted. I was back in my parish, preaching in three services. Why was I not disturbed? Because I believe that the biggest challenge that we have in ministry is a sense of self-entitlement. Where clergy think that they are worth a particular amount to perform a duty that is part and parcel of their, their job descriptions. Sometimes self-entitlement makes us to think that we should be treated in certain ways. And we forget the grace of God. Today I want to say that sense of entitlement makes you to think that a particular tribe deserves to serve in a particular area, sense of entitlement makes certain people to exclude others from ministry, forgetting that ministry is supposed to be the Lord's vineyard for everybody, for he calls all, regardless of tribe, race, or their economic background sense of entitlement makes some people think that they are better than others. Some condemn others. It doesn't matter our academic qualification. God calls everyone to serve in whatever capacity. In the book of Joshua, chapter 17, beginning to read from verse 12 to 18, the tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh, which were the sons of Joseph, had a problem with self-entitlement. When they had conquered the land and they had allocated the land to people of different tribes, the 12 tribes, they thought that their land was hilly and they wanted to protest just as protests are normal in the church today protest against transfers, court cases and litigation, the challenges of thinking that you deserve more than the others. The children of Manasseh complained, but Joshua, led by the Holy Spirit, gave us the antidote of self-entitlement. Number one, self-entitlement breeds laziness. The priests, ministers, Lay readers, evangelists who have a sense of entitlement do not work in all the stipulated days. They think they just deserve it and they forget. These, the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh, did not want to go and cut the woods and cultivate. They did not want to conquer more land. They thought they just deserved because of their large population. In fact, it is said they were sixth in population among the 12 tribes of Israel. When you feel you are entitled, you don't work hard. The people who succeed and excel are the people who roll their sleeves and they think they don't deserve. And by God's grace, they work in the field. They toil, sense of entitlement, breeds not only laziness, but also poverty. Number two, when you are self-entitled, you forget the grace of God. It is by grace of God that you are given your position, either as a priest, it is by the grace of God 
that you are born in a particular community or tribe. It is by the grace of God that we are ordained, not because we deserve it. In fact, we do not deserve. It is by the grace of God. Entitlements make us to forget the grace of God. Entitlement makes us to think that we are better than the other person. And indeed, in life and re in reality, no one is better. When you cure entitlement, number one, you work hard by God's grace. You ask God to give you strength. Do pastoral, love your Christian, visit them regardless of their economic status and, and uh, position in society. Visit all. Uh, just as you look at the book of Acts, Paul preached uh, to the rich, rich lady called Lydia, a seller of purple cloth. By the way, my wife is also called Reverend Lydia, so I can identify with that. Lydia was a seller of purple cloth. She was a seller of uh, velvet, one of the most expensive. She was the cream de la cream. We preached to the cream de la cream, people of position. Number two, they preached to a lady who was possessed and a slave, a double tragedy, very poor and also without any resources, but they preached to her. Lastly, they preached to the middle class, the jailer, a civil servant. Therefore, when you don't have any entitlement, you work hard. That's why the people who begin from the bottom of the society, the, the scum of the earth, when you realize that you don't have entitlement, number one, you work hard. Put God first. Number two, you know that it is by the grace. You don't post, you don't beat your chest. Lastly, the grace of God. And lastly, you count yourself worse. You become humble. As I conclude, I like to say this text that is found in Acts. Acts, chapter, not Acts, Luke chapter 18, beginning to read from verse 9 to 14. Two people went to pray. One was a tax collector. The other one was um, a, a Pharisee. The Pharisee prayed and he says, I thank God that I'm not like anyone of this. I tithe. I'm better. I keep the law. He had a sense of self-entitlement. But he went home. Rejected by God. But the other one who did not have a sense of entitlement. And he realized that it is by the grace. And he is not better. He prayed and he said, oh God, remember me a sinner. And he went home justified. May we be humble in salvation. Accept that we are sinners in need of God's grace. May we be humble in prayer that without God, we cannot do anything. And lastly, may we be humble in our service as priests and as pastors. May the Lord richly bless you. Never, ever, ever be led by entitlement. And let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we pray that all the sense of entitlement may be lost in us. May we descend as Christ you ascend. May we go down as your sin. May we not be led with entitlement. May we be humble, work hard, and dear Lord, I pray that may we consider ourselves not better than others. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.